Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Best Day Ever podcast. In case you didn't know, today is the best day ever because yesterday is gone and we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So that makes today the best day ever. It's the only day you've got. On today's episode, I have Diman Zuno. And Hello, everyone. I, <laughs> um, I met Diman back in this summer, this summer, 2022. And uh, we met at Young Life Camp. I was an intern this summer. I shared a little bit about that in this previous episode. But I met Diman at Young Life Camp in Bulgaria. Because, yeah, Diman, where exactly are yeah. you from? Tell so us. The I, audience. Yeah, I am from Bulgaria originally. And yeah, I come from the city Burgas, which is in Bulgaria. And we met with Olivia at this camp. It was, it was, yeah, it was very fun. It was amazing experience there. I I remember that it was some casual introduction for each one of us, but mm-hmm. then we really clicked with with each one. Yeah. Yes. Everyone at that camp was amazing. Like I loved um everyone that I got to meet there and I'm honest and right now I'm trying to replay I'm trying to think if but I'm really trying to think if I can remember like when we met exactly but I think it was just the first like, days the first yeah, like, days the like basically the first days yeah, yeah. Day zero as like everyone's just saying hi getting to know each other so anyway yeah. but I have to say the most vivid memory I have of you was um entertainment night when you were part of the <laughs> skit yes <laughs> yes is dancing so, yeah. passions that was the best thing I think from this, uh, like one of the best things at this camp was the dancing part. So oh, I can never it. forget this. I love dancing. I love everything to do with that. And yeah, we did a lot of that at the camp. <laughs> <laughs> I know, honestly, <laughs> if you've ever experienced camp in general, um, Young Life Camp is just like another level. You're just like hype and wild and crazy. But you're also um, being, like a lot of teens are being introduced to the gospel, which is the best part. That's why we do what we do um, when we're serving with Young Life. And um, with that, were you always part of Young Life? No, actually, that was the first time that I was even, that I was at a Young Life camp. That's so cool. Yeah, it's honestly, it's such an amazing platform for kids. It's great. I love it. But um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it teaches them uh, a lot about the faith, the Christian faith, alongside with very fun activities. Yes. Entertainment. (laughs) It's definitely unforgettable. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. When we had dancing nights, it mm-hmm. was it was awesome. We could, yeah, we could show, um, we could entertain the kids. That was yeah. the teenagers. That was the goal of it. But we also had a lot yeah. of fun, like you're showing uh, ourselves. Them, yeah, <laughs> ourselves. like you're showing them that like life with Jesus is fun. Yeah. Like life with Jesus yeah. actually is life. Like it actually, like I feel like before I knew Christ, I really wasn't living honestly like I was like thinking I I mean I was having fun like don't get me wrong I had good moments and I would say like I had maybe like glimpses of joy but it wasn't until I truly like came to the Lord that I feel like my life has just been like the greatest roller coaster ever like and it's only going up like I feel like life with Jesus like you just you only grow more in your relationship with him which leads me Mm -hmm. to my first question um so i'd love to hear more just about like your life and your experiences and Mm -hmm. your journey and um how um because i know that you're a believer and i would love to share like um if you want to share about like your story of course yes yeah your walk with christ (laughs) yeah yeah so it's a walk that still goes on i have to say that but Mm, it has been transforming my life in many ways in all different areas it it started when i was 17 years old 
And I come from a non-Christian family, so I I was not familiar with the Christian faith that much. I didn't even know uh, basic facts about it. So I could not hold a conversation or argue about it or none of that, no. Um, that, yeah, she, that was a Christian and we were together in a English class. And I don't know if you can hear me now. Is everything fine? Good. So we were together in an English class that we have been taking. And at one moment, it just got closer with this friend. It was a girl that I started to have feelings towards. At one moment, I realized, wow, okay, so let me learn more about her. <laughs> and I will, I will go on her Facebook and look everything. <laughs> I will, I will stalk everything <laughs> and I will make a research because I you like were... this <laughs> you, you really took it to the next level, full on getting to know everything about her. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, every every tiny detail. And we were not even uh, in a relationship at that moment. We were just uh, liking each other and our friendship was yeah very good. But... I want to make uh, a good impression and to show that I care about her. So I learned from her Facebook that she, she goes to church, that she's a Christian. But I've never heard about this type of church, which was a Protestant church. Because in Bulgaria, where I come from, our official religion is Orthodox. And it's quite different type of Christianity. So I see that on her like this information and I say that's that sounds interesting um and when I when I am hanging out with her later on um in my mind I I go like okay so I know this fact about her she doesn't know anything but this is the moment that I have to show that uh yeah I care about her and I want to learn more so I say at the end of our hmm, maybe you can call it a date or just hang out. I say, by the way, I know that you go to church, so this Sunday I may come. <laughs> and she, she, yeah, she looks amazed. She looks like, uh, like surprised <laughs> of, of that, me saying this. So you just um, go, you just go, by the way, I know you go to church. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the way, I know you go to church, so. I've heard I of church before. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> can I this Sunday? Uh, I can come if you want. And she's like, "Okay, no good, <laughs> all right." Yeah, I, I, yeah. So she. Wait, how old were you about, again? Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Yeah, just seventeen. Yeah. And uh, but wow. I was very close to eighteen. That was in the summer okay, of twenty, okay. the summer of twenty eighteen. Wow, so you go to church. Yeah. So that went, was sorry. So then you went to church. Yeah, that was how the first time I went to church. Wow, that is so good. It's like it's just so funny because like everyone, everyone just has like their own little things that like kind of like are seeds. Even if your intentions were maybe for the girl, it was like God still used that. He like he draw he drew you into him and his yeah. love. Like he he yeah. Oh, um. he, mm, exactly. He knows the exact moment when, um, when like he knows how to uh, show his love to for you. Mm -hmm. He knows how to uh, attract you towards mm -hmm. him. And of course, you also have have to, need to have interests in learning more about him, getting to know him better. At that moment, it wasn't only the desire for me to make a good impression, even though that was the, the bigger part, it was some curiosity as well about the faith and what is it all about. I had a lot of um, curiosity for life and meaning in general before that, before even knowing this person. 
that uh, that's how I think um, God started to um, put questions and to work in my heart to get me to this point. Um, for a long time, uh, two years before this happened, I was asking questions like, uh, what is the meaning of life and why we are all here? Like, why are we all created here? We, what is our purpose? What is the meaning of everything? Mm. I, I was searching that in the universe. That, that was the only thing that was outside of me and bigger than me in this earth. So I was very interested in this, in these topics. Mm -hmm. Look, so reading about that, learning about that, I believe that someday we can, yeah, find why we were, what was the purpose of everything. And I want to find this purpose because for me, it would be, it, it, for me, it was very um, meaningless otherwise to um, continue living because I had difficulties in my life. I think a lot of people um, need to ask certain questions and the big questions, not be afraid to ask the big questions. Yeah. No, do not be afraid of that. Um, if you think I, think, I think I was like this before. So a certain question comes to mind, but I neglect it because no one else asked this question, at least vocally. <laughs> no one of my friends, family, wonders about such things. We never talked about that in the family. Like, uh, by the way, is, uh, is there something more? Like, mm -hmm. no, just it is what it is. And I believe yeah. um, a lot of people, this question comes to their minds, but they're uh, just ignore it. And they say, that is something not for me to ask about, but that's not true. Like you're, a, a, you're an individual placed in a, uh, on this earth, not because of a coincidence, you're not just some bunch of cells that is here and um, to, do, to, to function in some way and then die forever. Um, you're someone who can think and you have intellect, you have mind, which is very powerful, by the way. So you, you can use that to ask your questions for your life, it can be different type of question. It can be, what is it really, what is really for me to do? Like, what is my uh, main talent or what is my gift that I have to find? Yeah, so always, always ask the big questions. Do not stray from that and do not be afraid to seek the answer to them. Mm -hmm. that's how it started for me wow that is so cool like I yeah. love I love like hearing what was on your heart like before like this was even like an opportunity for you to be like going to his English classes and meeting the person that God um like allowed to be used in your life to like eventually come to know him like the fact that before any of that happened it was still on your heart like who am I what is my purpose why am I here because I can definitely relate even for me. I like, like something for me, I always, I just wanted to like be special and like stand out and have a reason, like be unique. Like I was always about like, like I genuinely believed in a God, but I didn't know like I could go deeper in a relationship with God than knowing like he's something in the clouds. Like I thought I knew everything there was to know about God, but like, obviously that was not enough because I was still like, like, who am I? Like, literally, what am I doing here? Like, what is my purpose? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to be a part of something big and the best thing that I ever could have yeah. <laughs> was finding my my story in it and it ended up not even being my story. I got a role in the best story of the entire existence of the world, which is God's story. Mm -hmm. I, I love how... Um, history is literally like his story like we are living in god's story yeah. right now and i like yeah. everything you said i encourage the people listening right now as well like if this is something you're curious about faith or whether you've been walking with jesus like i hope that you would always have like the heart attitude to just always want to be learning like we should never feel like we know it all like we literally there's mm -hmm. so much beyond us there's things that we will never actually know the answers to ever 
Like there's things that like the smartest people on the planet don't even know the answers to. And like, there's so much just like beauty and wonder and all. And I think sometimes even just looking at how mysterious the world is, is something beautiful that like we can't ever have the all the answers to. And I like everything you said, um, I just would repeat again that every single human being does have a purpose and they are more than just like a bunch of molecules. Like they have like a heart and feelings and like things that literally makes their heart race, whether it's like a sunset or like going hang out with your friends or like mm-hmm. it's something to like that long relatives you haven't seen in so long or like literally going to have coffee or like having your favorite soda with a sandwich and watching a movie. Like everyone has a like little things <laughs> or maybe it's yep. like literally whatever it is. There's all things that like make us, like hold on to life but it's just so much more beautiful that we when we know Jesus we don't have to just hold on to moments and that as I'm sure you've experienced like as your journey has continued um like that we do just get to like have those experiences like all the time in like even cooler ways as we witness how God uses us. But back to your story, I want to hear more. So you go to church for the first time. Like, what was that like? Well, to be honest, very awkward experience. <laughs> <laughs> very, very um, strange, uh, weird for me to be in such a place because I enter, I don't see usual uh, Orthodox elements in the church. I see just a, just a hall with chairs and a scene. And I go there and, okay, people seem fine, open, kind. And we start to sing songs um, at the church. But the songs have a text which uh, glorifies and talks about God and how good he is, how strong he is. For someone who hears that for the first first time, that was very weird. Mm -hmm. And I could not understand anything at all. so I'm just sitting there very awkwardly, like just uh, with my hands down, looking like on the sides. And I don't know how to react to it. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's like I've been put, uh, I, like, it's like I have been put at some concert of another planet, you know? <laughs> and yeah. it was even more awkward because the girl was in the worship team. So she was singing. Oh, no way. Yeah, she was singing in front of me. I was oh. on the first rows, and I had to wow. look. Uh, I had to look. Yeah, I had to look at her. I had to look, like I'm, yeah, uh, understanding everything. So after this comes the sermon, and this is the part where the preacher and the the, the teacher, you can also call it, uh, talks about the Bible and lessons from it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this the church wasn't. Um, like the, the the things they talked about were not uh, some basic fundamentals that you know you could understand they were in the middle of some very complex series about <laughs> interpreting the bible and some chapters in it and stories in it like just in the middle of this some series they're doing and i totally get lost i totally uh get confused about it um and mostly boring for me the first time but um the girl was sitting next to me, so I cannot fall asleep. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, I feel like I'm going right to sleep. Now. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to just lay down and sleep because my eyes are closing, but I have to keep them open. She's next to me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is so funny. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. So it, that, that's, that's how the first uh, time went. Uh, the best thing that day was for me the people, very kind and open people. You, you could talk with them, you could hang, you could just, you know, um, have easy time with them, good time with them. They were easy going, mm-hmm. and some of them I started to befriend, and now they are one of my best friends to this day. Wow. That Four is years so later, cool. yeah. Wow. So that's how it went the first time though, and um, I continue to go. For the same two reasons that I mentioned, the curiosity, but a big part was also the intention, like my um, intention to go to, sh- to show a good impression, and because I like the girl. Mm-hmm. 
um yeah that was about the first day and yeah the next things that follow are how we yeah our relationship and how that went yeah i could go into that as well yeah so for me someone that is getting into the faith was um yeah i could i could easily understand it and accept it i have to say that everything aligned at that moment um with my questions before that having a higher power that creates everything with design and purpose was was eye-opening to me i could find the logic and meaning in that wow what was it um was there a specific moment or was it just like you had like such a wide um curiosity and when like it was spoken to you that there was like a god of creation of like detail like was it just like hearing those words like was there like like an like an inner battle when you heard this or was like it easy for you to like hear this and accept it or was there any sort of like question you had yeah definitely a lot of questions i had in my mind so this when where my friends uh came into place my new friends from this church we had started to hang out and i basically our hanging out was basically just back and forth questions and answers about the faith mm-hmm. and i usually like to ask a lot of questions so i had very specific questions about uh god his existence the bible how yeah. it came to be and all of that really so i had a lot of questions to be answered and after that i yeah after that was a process of two months and a half so Wow. I would I I won't say that uh, for every person it is uh, like in a moment they can understand and accept that, but it could it it could be a process, you know. Yeah. Um, it could be a process. For me, it was a process, mm-hmm. not a short one. After which I could yeah I could say, um, fully confident that I accept the faith. I accept my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That he, Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, that that he that he gave himself for me, so I don't I have I don't have to bear the consequences of my mistakes mm-hmm. in life, and I can live for him, not for me. Yeah, wow. And looking mm-hmm. back on those moments, um, how do you feel like your life has? evolved like since coming to know Christ like uh, more specifically how did you see your future going and did that change when you accepted Jesus like how you viewed your future and if so what things changed Mm -hmm. as you developed your relationship with Jesus yeah so I would have to I have to start with something that uh was the first thing that changed so when i accept the faith um we get into a relationship with this girl as i said right and it goes well but i am still new to everything she has been for many many she she was a child into the like familiar with how to properly live and not to not live in sin but to live for god you know how to live a a godly life but i'm not so i i pull her into i pull her into uh far far from god i pull her into things that are not um good are bad and are bad because of my mm, my nature yeah um i could still believe but that doesn't mean that uh your life reflects what you say and do and at that moment it was um, fully into intellectually for me to uh believe it wasn't that i was putting uh works or i have lived what i believe so i actually acted opposite on my belief and the first thing i learned was um how to trust really in him when we uh broke up with the girl that was a big uh hit on me yeah that was very hard and 
because I was relying on people in my heart. I was depending on people. I was needy. And yeah, when that happened, my faith um, shaped, got unstable, mm. and it was about to fall apart. Yeah. Because of this. So the main thing that started to change me was to not rely on people. I had to go through a depression because of this. It was very difficult for me. And I know that I, I know people also that have been through depression because of their uh, breaks up with girls. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. Um, and my heart was broken for a long time, several months. So I my faith decreased and everything. Um, but then God started to teach me how to stand again, stand back, to bounce back from this. And it was hard, really. I had to uh, start slowly. I was I stopped to do anything after, after this point. So I stopped I stopped studying, I stopped training, I stopped Mm, praying, st stopped going to church, stopped being active in conversations with my family, friends, nothing. I was fully inactive person uh, for months, which is very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And was it was it was uh, clearly seen in me. Uh, but my faith at one moment, um, I had I had to use the only thing that was not fully broken, and that was my faith. Wow. And that is where I started to put some, you know, you know, God started to uh, work with that little faith I had. I started to pray every day um, just for two minutes in my bed every morning because it was, I could, I could only concentrate for two minutes, no yeah. more. Mm, I could not even talk properly. So that's how it started. And after a month, I was, I, I created this habit. So I was now ready to jump to another thing, which was to train. Mm -hmm. So uh, one habit created another habit. Now this habit of training created for me another habit, which was studying. And with month after month, I was able to really to get to, uh, got really uh, got, uh, brought back my life. And but at that moment, when my life was fully like it was like uh, it was active again, yeah, my faith was much stronger in him. Wow. So it was a partnership between me and him. Mm -hmm. I what I did was basic, simple thing. I started to use what I have, my faith, and what he did, he increased it. He returned my relationships with friends and family my um, habits, my life as a general. And I was, I didn't have any brokenness after this moment. This is where I actually believed wholeheartedly, not only with my mind. Mm -hmm. Because to believe wholeheartedly, you don't always, um, you know, um, in order to believe wholeheartedly, it's not enough to believe with your, just intellectually. Yeah. Just with knowledge. Yes. I have yeah. to learn this. Like heart, this mind, way. and soul. I think there's so many things I just want to point out. Like, first of all, I think it is so cool. Like just going back to like the beginning stages of your faith, how you had your friends with you. And I think it's so cool that you were like, you were like challenging, asking questions and digging deep with your friends. Because if you're able to like set up that kind of foundation in like in like any kind of relationship, to just be real and raw with yourself. That is the only way to have a true friendship and deeper meaning, deep, deeper connection with someone that you can really rely on, especially in this life with Christ, where you're doing like faith in this world that we live in. It can be really difficult to really walk with Jesus when you don't have community. And it's like, you need people, like you 100%. Like, like I think it's my nature to kind of fall back and like just kind of be like independent into myself and not always asking for help, asking for deeper um like just asking for ways 
like asking for people to be in my life it's like sometimes a challenge for me and I think it's really cool that like like at the beginning of like some of your really good friendships now started with you just being curious and being really yeah. asking questions about like Jesus and um but I was curious um I have some other things I'd love to follow up with too but I was curious like what were some of those things that you wanted or that you were relying on like when it came to people like how in which ways were you relying on relationships instead of putting that like full trust on god yeah so the big, as i said this was the the biggest thing that's changed in my life um for example the relationship with the girl there i relied on her to give meaning to my life and happiness joy hope that my life will be good Mm -hmm. um so yeah it can be clearly seen that i have put uh identity of myself into her Mm -hmm. and um my my picture for life that was like my life will be spent with her and we will live together happily until the end of our lives um but that doesn't happen and yeah that when when it can be clearly seen when she was out of my life how i was broken and uh, it can because of this situation and this effect on me it can be seen that i relied on her for a lot of things she was like your life source instead of jesus being the one yes. who we depended on relied on and was your source of life Exactly. And you know, Olivia, it's very interesting to see, by the way, something here that just came to my mind. Um, it's good, I believe, to mention that. So I mentioned in the beginning that my reasons to go into church in the beginning was mainly because of her and very little because of curiosity, right? So that, that, um, that, yeah, that, that, that uh, was, yeah, that, these were my main reasons. Mm-hmm. And when the girl got out of my life, uh, a big part also got out. So yeah. a big reason yeah. went away for me to go to church and yep. for the faith itself, I mean, in my heart. Um, but very little, this little piece that was in the beginning stayed. Mm. This little piece stayed in my heart that was in the beginning. This yeah. curiosity, this willingness also to learn more about him, the greater. And mm. that's what I then actually started to increase and to be uh, watered. This wow. little seed that was in the beginning started to be watered more and more. Before that, what was watered, what mm-hmm. was fed, were feelings towards a person was not was not faith it was feelings wow and yeah that is i i love how you just use that analogy because it was like it was like what drew you in might have been that girl but what drew you in was still your willingness to go and your yes even if it was just a small little bit of it, it still is like part of your willingness to go and like yeah. God, like hung on to that and because God has already chosen you it's a like God like wants you to know him because he already like loves you with all that he is like it's a like God loves you so much it's like he knows um exactly what would lie ahead and he knew that there would be a breakup happening but it's so cool that that breakup didn't just go to waste but it ended up actually being one of the things that built you up stronger yes. in your faith. And um, there are so many things. I have so many questions of just about like. <laughs> just, um, yeah, you can go. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So um, some of those questions I had, or it was also just kind of like a statement I wanted to make just about how good God is is um, how he used that experience of the relationship, which seemed like the, well, not seemed, it probably was like the hardest thing you were experiencing. Like you like lost like that person that was literally your life source. Like we said earlier, that you're getting your joy from. She felt like she was like your meaning, like for life. And, um, and obviously when that 
when like that relationship ended and she was no longer a person in your life um it probably caused you to feel your whole world shattered and like everything that you had been building up like that foundation crumbled because like the foundation it was being built on was not a firm foundation and that just reminds me of um like just like your story and like what ended up happening after and how it actually you had two you really could go two ways you could have chosen to take things on your own and trying to navigate life like outside of god and like or you could choose to fully rely on him and just like lean on him and like ask him for guidance and help and even if you didn't even realize that's what you were doing it's like that's actually what ended up happening and as an effect like that built you up on a new foundation it's a firm foundation that literally nothing can make it shake Mm -hmm. down again and I just wanted to ask specifically um what do you feel like allowed you to like rely on God in that time even though you were kind of questioning your faith, as you mentioned, you're questioning God. They're like, what drew you to like wanting to keep leaning on him? I mean, I know you said like he was the only thing that was still there. Like that, that faith was like, yes. thing that did not leave. But what what allowed you to like go beyond the fact that like this relationship just ended and you're like, kind of like, why God? Like what, what allowed you to really keep leaning in to Jesus during that time and what were more like what were like the tools that you would share with someone who is in faith now like how would you share how would you um share ways for them to process if they're going through something similar right now if they lose someone a best friend another relationship um someone they were holding on to like how would you encourage them yeah, well, that's a great question. Uh, so to start with the first part, how I chose to uh, rely on my little piece of faith when I could have could chosen to rely on other things, like still maybe not this person, but other people, other things in life in general. Well, the answer is simple. I just didn't believe that other things would give me meaning and purpose and value. I didn't ha- have hope in that as much as I had hope in God. And that has to do with, that has to do with um, even before I came to faith. Before I came to faith, very shortly before I came to faith, very shortly in the same year, basically, just not in the summer, in the winter. Okay. I was asking these few questions. I was asking, and at the same time, I also was in um depression. That was actually the first one, not the one with the girl, but my first one, which was based on my failures that I considered failures, um, not succeeding in academically, or professionally, or with friendships, mm. um, sports. And this, uh, this, um, not this things that I could not achieve or succeed with the tempo that I wanted, comparing myself with other people. Well, that really put me down for not short time as well. So, yeah. um, just, just seeing how um, everything is so, um, It was, like have, another, uh, it was another yeah like a, i'm just trying to process that Sorry? yeah i was gonna say it's like another event of like identity like losing your identity in things because you're yeah finding, you're finding your identity constantly crumbles in things that are of the world because you may yeah. be awesome in academics but then one test you might not get the score you wanted immediately it's like oh shoot like now I'm not the student I thought I was, or like, whether it's like sports, you didn't get to play as well as you thought. And it's like, shoot, maybe like, I'm not like the player, like I thought I was. And like, 
not that one moment has to like defer you away from like continue to be good at sports or continue to be good at school or continue to pursue your passion. But it's like when your identity is in things of this world, you will easily find that you're going to be let down very, very often. <laughs> yes, exactly. That was the moment where my identity um, was very, was, was really in these things. So my identity was first there and then my identity was into my relationship with the girl. So um, in this depression, um, I just, well, I was not um, that inactive as, as uh, in the second one, but yeah, so I could clearly see, well, well, if I put, if I could to put my identity in these things, uh, that's just not going to be helpful for me. And um, so I don't find such hope in it. That's how I process that at that time. Um, and that's how I eventually got out of this depression. I, uh, I think the relationship with the girl and the, and the Christian faith, they also helped a little bit for that the, the, on the beginning. Yeah. But that's, that was, yeah, that was this, um, this period was when I found out uh, how uh, hopeless is and meaningless everything looks in life. So that's why when I was getting back now to the moment where I am coming back from my uh, second one depression, I said, I don't find such hope and meaning in other things, so these other things in life as well. So if I rely on them, I, I just don't trust it that much. Mm. I don't find it hopeful as, 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 as the Lord, as God. Mm. So that's how my mind processed it now. Now I can analyze it, of course, better, but at that moment it was just, um, no, I, I find more hope in him. I find more uh, strength in him. Only he can actually fix this uh, mess that I am. Like, he can only do it. I cannot do anything. No, no achievement, no type of success uh, would fix what I'm going through right now. Yeah. 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 And obviously, you can speak on that firsthand because that's what you, you experienced. Like, you had so many parts of your life that you were kind of relying on. And then all leading up to... Like after the relationship ended and you had to really build yourself up on Jesus and you answered the first part um, of the question, which was. Um... <laughs> uh, it, it was how I got out, how I chose to rely on God when I could rely on other things as well. Yes, you answered um, the first part of the question yeah. um, just by saying like simply that. It, it was he was the only thing that was like constant. more hope in God yes more hope yeah. in God like uh I have a higher chance with him <laughs> exactly I can bet on him more I can <laughs> bet on him more than I can bet on um I'll become a professional basketball player and that would fix my pain that was actual plan in my life wow to, to find friends yeah to find friends for becoming a professional basketball player to have friends in this way um, so fixing one need with uh, another, in a way. Mm, yeah, so, you're like, okay, this relationship's yeah. over. I'm going to become a professional basketball player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I will, and I will fix my life in this way, and I will do that and that. I have seen one year ago that didn't work, mm -hmm. like even the same year that didn't work. So why would I do that again? Yeah. Why would, uh, I have seen that uh, life is very unfair. I have seen that uh, it's, you don't always get what you want. Mm, so I think I have higher chances with God. That was it. I, I will bet on him and my faith in him. He is more powerful than me also. So <laughs> yeah, like... That is the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, well, yeah, he can, he can do much more than I can do. So yeah. Wow. So... Um, along with that, my second question is like, yeah. knowing what you know now, and just where you are with Jesus, and of course, like, even now and forever, like, 
walking with Jesus every single day. Like it's a choice every single day. And even like right now, there might be certain moments in your life where you're like, you know, you could be spending more time with him just because, you know, it's literally good for your soul. Even for me, I'm like, I know I could be sitting down, being intentional, starting any my day with Jesus. It's actually something I'm trying to be on a goal of, of like really intentionally starting and ending my day with Jesus, whether that's like worshiping, praying, reading the Bible. I want to do more things or just like in dialogue with him. I want to do more things to start and end my day with him. But um I just was curious, like, how would you, like, I'm um, something that just comes to your mind that maybe you find that you're doing right now that works that you would um, suggest for someone to do in there in a moment. Like, mm-hmm. experience, yes. Experience. Yeah. So if someone is at this, uh, if someone is at a state uh, similar to where I was, so heartbroken because of something, not finding meaning in his life anymore, losing this meaning also, going into this desperate path towards yeah. meaningless. Um, first of all, maybe ask yourself, okay, am I able to, oh, am I able to uh, derive meaning on my own or um, to find absolute truth and meaning for my life on my own? Or I can allow God to do that for me yeah. I can allow something else to do that for me and um, define it for me. Um, so, which from where I can follow, I think ask. That's also the big questions as I started. Ask big questions and don't uh, let your mind be in a box. When yeah. you are in depressive feelings, your mind is usually in a box. You cannot get out unless you start to go against what you think. Yeah. Like start really to oppose it. If it start to it, oppose. Yes. Like, like challenge your thoughts and be like, no. Like it's like the things that you have repeating yeah. in your brain that are actually lies. Like, like, because actually you're being held captive in your mind when you like keep replaying and saying these things. Like actually like acknowledging the things and the dialogue that you're having and cutting it off and being taking control and being like, no, this is not yes. true. This is not true. Yeah. This is not true. And replacing it yes. with the truth. Yes. Yes, exactly. Um, if you are a believer, use the word of God, open the book, start reading verses um, about your, who God created you to be, yes. who you are created in the image <laughs> of God, your identity in Christ. Start reading verses about, like, even the first verses, like, start reading Genesis, Genesis where it says, yeah. God created us in his image. And say, I am created in his image. Start to speak truth from the word of God. Yeah. And let your mind be there. Mm-hmm. Just go there. Yeah. Um, if you are an unbeliever, I would say that um again, your faults are against you at that moment when you're the state you are at the moment, your faults are against you. I can assure that um because I was in a similar place. Uh, they seem comforting. They seem uh, your f- like they're your friends and yeah, they want to help you with always the having these thoughts. They're useless, I, I, actually, yeah. They're useless. So my suggestion is start opposing your thoughts. Start to, uh, yeah, start to oppose them with positive yeah. thoughts, with other type of thoughts. I would say not just positive, but Think about, okay, I my thoughts at the moment, they're not mine. They are thoughts of depressive feelings. Mm-hmm. Do not consider your thoughts rational. Start to, um, start to, to challenge. Yeah, to find values in something, core values in something. I would say, yeah. First, control your thoughts. First thing, control your thoughts. Oppose. Um, your most of your faults that go, that do not go into um, a good direction. So yeah, notice that. Mm. Second, when you are controlling your faults, that also can enable you to control your actions as well. Yeah. So the next thing is oh, wait, start is there... creating habits. Oh wait, is there a call coming in? I'm not sure. 
Wait, this is so weird. My phone, my laptop is like ringing. All right, then maybe you someone's that? calling you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear it. Someone is calling you. Is it me? It's you, yeah. What is that? If your uh, laptop is connected to your phone, it could be possible. Oh. Oh my gosh, okay. Do you remember Sarah from... Yeah. She was calling me on Instagram. Her her grandfather's not doing okay right now. Really? So I hope... Yeah, I told her that I wasn't going to call her right back after... <laughs> That's so weird. It was linked to my laptop. Yeah, they're linked. Okay, wait, that is so weird. Whoa. Okay, okay wait, let's just cut. I'm going to make a cut sound so I know where that happened. Okay. Okay, um, okay wait, you were just saying, um, you just got done saying how your thoughts, you need to um, challenge them. And you oppose saying, them. Yeah. So um re restate that sentence. How you need to oppose your thoughts. Or so, I was gonna I was gonna also say, um, like we get so used to our thoughts that it just becomes like a comforting cycle of our day. Like we're just so used to these things being there that it just becomes like our lifestyle and to like believe like, yep, this is just how I am. Yep, I just don't have like a purpose. Yep, I'm just like not going mm -hmm. anywhere. Yep, I can't do this. Or or we start to tell ourselves like, like we, we start to claim an identity on things and we don't even realize like we're claiming the identity. Like for example, we can claim that, oh, I'm actually not a, like someone that can talk to people or I'm someone that like doesn't know how to socialize or I'm someone that um isn't gonna go do big things in life or like, like we start to clean this and then yeah or we say like no i don't have motivation to do like no like that's actually not true like it's like by switching your thought to the like opposite and you, you say i am hard working and i'm going to like have motivation for my day or you're gonna say i am gonna learn how to get better at socializing and talking to people or i'm going to have this goal and do these things like when you like literally just switch it to the opposite and then first it starts with training like you were saying like those steps that are just like good to do yeah hold captive those things but you have to really train your brain challenge your thoughts like the things that aren't bringing you life they're not coming from god and like god wants yeah. to bring you life joy peace kindness like all the things the fruit of the spirit like that's what he wants to give us and then we have access to that 24 7 and things are challenging that they're trying to take away your identity they're trying to distract you because the enemy is trying to have a hold on you because he knows your life is so valuable and you can do mighty mighty things you can literally change the world by the spirit that dwells in you when you accept jesus christ and yes. that's what the enemy is trying to do he's trying to distract you he's trying to make you feel like you're not worthy enough or like you're not good enough that's literally not the truth it's not the truth and it's like it's like yep. why is the enemy attacking you so hard if your if your life isn't worthy, you know? Like if if you're yep. special, like it's like because um like we do have so much purpose that the enemy's trying to do that. And it's even true for the people who are not even believers. Um mm -hmm. I believe like the enemy is always like trying to um do things all the time to just keep us from living true life and knowing God. And mm -hmm. so, um, exactly. So, how would you one, suggest for? Mm -hmm. Oh wait, first finish what you're gonna say. First, one thing I want to say here, which which I think it's important to mention. So, for 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 us, we know that enemy attacks when he attacks with thoughts. That's why I say first and most importantly, oppose your thoughts. Don't mm -hmm. allow negative feelings. Attack them with positive positiveness. From think um words from the word of God or positive values that you may have. And I think for unbelievers, it's very, it's very difficult, more difficult even probably because um, when we, you are in depressive feelings and these thoughts come to you, um, you may think that they're from you. Mm -hmm. They come through your mind because 
um, you you only know about yourself. Yeah. You are not familiar with any other type of forces that can influence you, and any influence that is on you, you may think that um, it's it's solely just you, and that makes it even worse. Um, or some factor that you have allowed to influence you, like a TV show, or series, or anything, a person. Uh, and now, then you again feel worse because you just allowed this influence on you. And in this case, it's very difficult. But one thing that I can say to you, if you are watching this, do not agree with that. Do not think that it is only you and you, that you're the reason that this happens to you. There is an attack from an outside force on your mind. And you can also know that you can recognize that thoughts are not yours. Things that come to your mind are not yours. Because you know in your heart that you're not a negative person. You're not someone who is a negative towards his own life in order to say those things. I believe almost no one is. So when you are in these feelings, and come thoughts like, I'm not worthy, I don't deserve this, I have, I don't deserve to be on this earth, like, I don't have any meaning, and I have failed everything, so I'm not good at all. Um, you know that you don't believe that with your heart, so these thoughts cannot be yours. They are just in your mind. That's why they come to you. That doesn't mean they're yours, yeah yeah and i feel like the topic of that um like i'm just like if anyone truly is thinking those things i whether you are a believer or you're not a believer and you're listening to this and you're just like curious like who is this god what comes to you right now is psalms 139 and um i just want to read a couple of those verses right now yes. i have my bible i'm gonna read a couple, of, a couple of those verses really quick yes but, um, this is i truly feel like um like comforting to know like god literally is with you and he has created you so psalm 139 verse 1 this is a psalm of david it says you have searched me lord and you know me you know when i sit and when i rise you perceive my thoughts from afar you discern my going out and my lying down you are familiar with all my ways before word is on, is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And just continues to go like through verses uh, 13. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Uh, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. It just continues to go on. I just wanted to state out like some verses that just like really mm -hmm. highlighted to me. But like that's like the mystery of God. It literally says that you knit me um it says like, you knit me together in my one in my mother's womb and the verse where it says like when I was made it was in my frame it says my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth like whoa like yeah. we were literally created like before time existed like literally before the creation of everything like God handed us like every single one of us and it's like when you look in the mirror like how do you not see like what a miracle you are like you literally are such a miracle like to be alive and to be breathing to have like air in your lungs and to just like you truly have like so much in store for you in this world and like God has just created you for so, so, so much more and even when you are in these moments or like these thoughts like God doesn't want to just be okay you know come on like let's just like move on like the coolest part 
is like God wants to be there for you. And even for me, like sometimes I like shut down like the processing of um like when I'm going through like like a hard time because I like how I train myself is just to be like okay let's go like all right it's good it's fine like let's just move on like that's just how my brain works but like what I love about God is he's always reminding me that like he wants to be there with us like in the details in the moments of the hard times like how he was there for you and sometimes yeah. like I just view God sometimes like it's like a lighthouse or like like God literally is a light like it's like when yeah. life is so good, like when it's like a beautiful shining day, you're not gonna notice that the lighthouse is even shining. Like you don't even see yeah. it. But when it's like so dark and you're in like a middle of a storm and you just can't see anything but that light, like that light has always been there. Like the light has always yeah. been there. But it's like God, and you see God, like you literally see God so clearly, <laughs> like pulling you to shore when you're going through a hard time. And it's so crazy because if you read Paul, he'll be talking like about like he like, will pray for like hard times. <laughs> Just to like 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 he literally like, prays like to go experiences like through hard times, just to continue to like live a life like just so like close to the Lord, but also like for the name of Jesus to like, continue sharing. It's like mm -hmm. also another uh side to like why he was saying or praying for those things because like his calling was to literally wanting to be sharing the gospel to everybody and to have his experience like facing people with different opinions than what he than his belief in Jesus and that came with like the judgment of the world but how I am am relating this into right now is just the fact that um like hard times will literally draw you nearer and nearer to God so they can really be used as like a gift into our daily walk with Jesus because you really are like you're just like so much closer with him in yes this. yeah yeah exactly yeah yeah couldn't agree more with this so um, um did you have another did you have anything that you wanted to share add on to that it was very interesting yeah, the thing you said about the lighthouse, though, um, that it's in, only in the dark. I find that very good uh, relation and link. Yeah. God is, God is really a lighthouse for us, a big sign. Mm -hmm. And these verses in Psalms, they are touching. And anyone can read this and just see they are created in God's image. They are they are created uh, very carefully yeah. and with design. Yeah. When you look yourself in the mirror, look at yourself, re read these verses and say to you, wow, what a wonderful thing I am. See how wonderfully I am made. Um, just think about how complex you are as a human, as an organism, how many things function in you, your shape, your eyes, your mouth, acknowledge that. Yeah. Acknowledge that. Acknowledge that. This is where uh, your identity starts to uh, swift, swift and change, to switch yeah. from um, things that are um, visible, uh, like things which are people and what have talked about, to the things that... So, to things that are giving you life yeah. and to um, your inner uh, inner value in yeah. you. Mm -hmm. The value that God has put in you. And yeah. essentially, God himself, like he creating you in his image. Um, yeah, just think about that For, to any person, believer, non believer, look yourself every morning and say, wow. <laughs> I look I like I am a wonderful creature. Yeah. Like, I'm amazing. You are a miracle. <laughs> you are a miracle. Yes. So <laughs> listen to this every day. Yes, that is so good. And also, um, that just reminds me of what we were talking about a little bit before the episode, how you were saying like like you love talking to strangers because you get to learn more about 
them you get to like learn yes. more things about the world and like that just makes me think of like like I think uh, on the same note it's like because we are all God's creation it's like we get to learn more about God like by talking to others because it's yeah. like God made us in his image and yes. whoever you are like whether um like you're walking with Jesus or you're not like whoever you are every single person like yeah you were yes. made in his image and like when like you look at yourself like you're looking at like a like a little like a touch of god like it's like so cool like we just something that we can't ever truly fathom definitely ever. definitely uh like a, a cool mindset that i have some uh like sometimes when i talk to people is um you can learn anything from anyone everyone knows something that you don't know so when you go and talk to someone, keep this in mind, because mm -hmm. then it makes the conversation better. It makes your engagement better. As we have mentioned, everyone is made uniquely. Mm -hmm. Everyone is a different miracle. Yeah. With his own miraculous parts and characteristics. So search for this in the person. And yeah, it, it really helps though. It really helps. Yeah. Um, also, to show love, you can show love in many ways, and I, it's um, it's one of the biggest commands that we have in in the Word of God in the Bible. The Lord commands us to show love to our neighbor, and actually, the the, the word there for neighbor is is a word used for someone that is close to you. It doesn't mean just your house neighbor. It means basically everyone that is physically close to you. So go and show love. Go and live out what uh, God has commanded. Yeah, it's the, it's so true that God literally commands us to just well, love. Sorry. Oh, oh wait! It paused for a moment. Wait, finish what you were saying. Yeah. So I was I was saying that start with small steps, applying what you believe in and what you read in the in the Bible. When I was um, so the second thing that I want to say to such people which are in difficult times, start with small steps. Do not think big schemes mm -hmm. of fixing your life, but start with small steps after you also at the same time can control your thoughts better so yeah small steps is the key um when you apply god's word god yeah. starts with something small in you and then that enlarges because yeah. that becomes and, big. yeah no i just wanted to add and like i know obviously like we are saying like like to control your thoughts by like challenging it with like positive positivity mm -hmm. And like yes. someone who is like finding trouble to believe that um that they can like change their thoughts or like they think mm -hmm. it's not so easy to just like step out of it because like I understand sometimes like you really are just in the pit like you're just like in the grave and like you feel like there's no way to get out of like these the thoughts that are like having a hold of your life. I just want to tell yeah. you that there is um a way and actually the truth is sometimes you don't have the strength and actually as humans we don't have the strength to do this mm -hmm. on our own and like that is why um this word is so important that's why like that's why i follow the word because like, i need it every day like the reason yes. that i like, remain in this smile is literally because of jesus and like his spirit that dwells in me and it's like and that comes with like daily um like time like truly walking with Jesus like a friend and having a relationship with him daily and taking yes. steps taking action um to walk with him and i just wanted to make that known like that it is really really hard to like do this on your own like to like come out of a like a spot like that so like give yourself grace because like we can't do it. Like we literally can't do it on our own. And that's why we need people. We need community. We need friends. Yeah. And 
ultimately we need the word like that will just like transform your heart and your mind yeah exactly exactly the, the bible says to bear uh, each one's burdens so we are also called to bear the hardships that we go through yeah we're not called to live this life alone mm -hmm. and That's to live true. it for ourselves yeah acknowledge that you cannot do it and pull it off by yourself mm -hmm. yeah and one practical tip for really really living with your true identity every day i have to say that works for me is so using an audio or a video that um, reads verses about your identity in christ you can record yourself reading verses for identity you have in Christ or listen to such a video on YouTube. There are yeah. plenty. And listen to this every day when you go to work, to school, when you lay in bed. Yeah. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be a sermon. It can be 10 minutes or five minutes of just verses yeah. audibly. Or if you want, you can put it on your wall, write them and read them every day. Mm -hmm. when you go to bed when you stand that is up. so good so, do <laughs> not forget who reminder. you are yes. it's a constant yeah. reminder and like even for me it just reminds me of like my walk with christ like i accepted the lord when i was 18 it was march 10th 2019 i remember like all 2019 2020 i was like praying to god i was like god like who am i in you i was like okay i'm in this whole christian world this is like it was easy like i i like it was just easy for me. It just made sense. So I just like, okay, I'm a Christian now. Went to my service, accepted Jesus. It just made sense. Um, I mean, it came with like months and months, honestly, two years for me to finally like have like a heart attitude to like really change the things that I was still holding to um, from my past. But um, after time, like I truly, it, it was less about being a Christian and being like the fact that like I'm a child of God. And it was like, when I like, 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 I feel like for me, like my identity, my freedom came in knowing I'm a child of God and knowing like the Holy Spirit lives in me and that there's so much more than like, yes, eternity. We have eternity with heaven. Like, thank you, Jesus, like for the gift that you've yes. done. But like, there's so much more than that. Like, there's only like, a purpose for us today. Like, there's a purpose for us in this moment. Like, God wants to use you. And like, when you start walking in, um, like the belief of who God calls you, which is like fruitfully, wonderfully made. Like we are light, we're salt on the earth, like all these things that like God literally claims about us, about me and you, like to all the believers. Like he literally, like when I have that, like rolling around in my head, like I need to be reminded of that every day, but it gives me the boldness and the confidence to like walk like this. And I'm like, okay, cool guy. Like, how do you want to use me today? Like, and it truly does. It starts to like take hold and transform and like create roots. Like, it, like you need to plant those new seeds of positivity and life, like yeah. life to your brain in those thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that, that that really uh got uh, like I really uh got something in my head to say. Uh but we're running out of time. Oh yeah, oh shoot, shoot. Okay, wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> we get a new one. <laughs> yes, we have to. So okay, it's already recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You were saying uh, in response that you had something you wanted to share about. Um, um... Yeah, I want to share about what you just mentioned, uh, that every, each one of us has a purpose yeah. and that we are created with a reason. Um, I have to, I'm to say that as a message that each one of us has a plan for his life and you have been created with a plan you are not a coincidence. There is a very um, specific plan for your life. So we should not forget that. And we have to remind that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. The plan may not be clear and from the beginning, but that's why you have to keep going in order to figure out this plan for you. And one thing that um, I want to mention is from an author that I appreciate a lot. He's called Nick Vujicic. Mm -hmm. And he has a book where he says that 
for someone that has not find has not found his gift or mm, a call for his life yet what you could do is start helping people with anything mm -hmm. with anything you can do for them um volunteering it may be like a volunteer in yeah. some campaigns yeah just like just like you uh, are volunteering for your life for yeah. young life you are yeah you're you do that and uh, you like to do it you love to help people and you have yeah you have uh, you tell that your audience you show them how you love to do that and you also help people in this way and this author says when you do that actually um you will find out eventually where your gift is you see what you're good at you will wow. see your talent and yeah your skills where yeah. what you also and not only that also what you love to do because when you help people at, at some point you you see wow so this is where i am valuable for someone yeah so i can use that and improve that work on that it could be anything don't limit yourself to think that it has to be this profession mm -hmm. or this field this is so good yeah. i was just writing this down as you're saying that because um that was actually something I, i've actually never heard that before like i've never heard like the way to find your gifts or your talents or um the things that um you specifically are just not you love them, yeah and like to do love. Like i've never heard that like the way to do that is through helping others and the reason why it stood out to me so much is because I think like sometimes we get so caught up in like our own selves and our own world, like in our own worlds that like we're constantly we're we're constantly like putting our lives on hold. Like we're not actually we end up like I feel like all of us, if we want to do more than like like we all know we're like capable, or like if you don't know you're capable of more, you truly are. Like you are so much more capable. Yeah. Than you know you're able of doing. And I feel like on the other hand of that, we get so stuck in this mindset of just like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what my purposes are. I don't know what my gifts are. Like, like we get so stuck in that that we end up just not doing anything at all because it's like exhausting to our brain. And yeah. I think in general, like when you when you help, when you give your time, and you just when you just do that, like you get so much more. Like just by yeah. serving, I mean, be with others. Yeah. Like whether you're like, like teaching kids how to play basketball or you're like helping kids with English or you're like helping your neighbor mow the lawn, like just like doing things that um, are really like a generosity of using your time, uh, using the resources, you know, using your skills um, and whatever it is, like literally anything it is like, yes, I yeah. agree, you just go for it. Like just like do you something. Cannot, you cannot oppose that. Like you, like you cannot say, oh, but I'm not good at this. Well, do you have time? Yeah. Yes. Do you have a physical strength? Well, you have some <laughs> at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, can you talk? Can you do something like, yeah? Well, you can, you have enough to start helping people. Mm -hmm. So you, if each one of us, or most of all, like not count people that have disabilities, yeah. of course, I mean, but even, yeah, people that are, yeah, are you able to talk? Are you able to do that? You have enough. You need time, you need strength, and you need willingness. That's it. Like anyone, no matter who you are, your circumstances, like like what you look like, like um, yeah. there really are ways for you, like just through who you are. Like yeah. everyone, and everyone has potential for more. Yeah, and you and you also cannot say, but I'm not good at that, because this is the whole purpose of you starting helping people as well. Not because of yeah, you have to love people, yeah, of course, but it's... also it's a journey for you to find mm -hmm. your gift and your purpose in life, mm -hmm. and that is where you have to forget all your depressive feelings and thoughts. I was in a similar place. I have some, um, you know, understanding, understanding how it feels. 
and I can say, forget these thoughts that you have, you know, depressive feelings. Depressive feelings don't produce good thoughts. And you may have a great plan how you're going to do this and that, um, how you're going to bounce, but that probably just forget it. Start simple, start with helping. And yeah, just very consistently. You yeah. need consistency. You don't need genius plan now. You yeah. need consistency and you need just some basic plan. Yeah, it's so true. Like, honestly, like, I think, like, what would go along with that is, like, as you're doing those things, you're building your social, your ability to socialize, you're building your your ability to connect with others. Um, and, like, the more you just do that, you make, you just, like, build a network, you build experiences, you build, like, you, you're building yourself up, like, you really are building yourself up, and you have something to just, like, show for, like, just by anything like but literally doing anything like volunteer to nursing home like i like there's yeah. so many things i did like that just they were random but like i loved it and like it showed me what i love to do like for me so many things have just developed over time i could tell you right now for certain like what i love to i'm so passionate about people documenting life sharing stories i just love hearing about people and i love like life <laughs> i just i'm like so nostalgic i love traveling i love new cultures like I love everything that just um I mean I just like love life in general but specifically people hearing stories like like giving people a moment to shine as well I just yes. like love that like I love giving people like an opportunity to shine and just be heard and seen and loved and to maybe even like experience something that they didn't even know like I love giving people like an opportunity to like do more be more and mm -hmm. um and along with that, I was going to say, ultimately, like, it's a gift to know Jesus because I found my purpose yes. is actually, like, beyond all of those things that he's going to use me for in my passion, my purpose is truly just, like, love others and yeah. share the gospel. Like, yeah, you know, like, for Jesus, like, all for his name. Like, that is like, really? my yeah. purpose here. And, like, like, our purpose, like, that's, like, what God desires of us to like go yeah. make disciples, like share it to the nations, like yes. share to your neighborhood. Like yeah. Just like and like really it's for people who are like for believers, it's very helpful. As you say, show love. It's one of the I don't know why we um uh, I believe we have to be more active in this area as Christians. Uh we have to be more active in our love and showing this love with actions yeah very very much um yeah we like um another thing that may mo motivate believers is what the bible says about doing good works jesus encourages us to do good works and to volunteer he um says to people in the new testament to go and sell their properties um and to give to the poor uh, he asks his followers to do that as well mm -hmm. and he says so that you could gather treasures in heaven mm -hmm. before that he says do not gather treasures on material ones on earth that are temporary yeah uh, but gather treasures in heaven so as believers think about that treasures in heaven Hmm. I can gather treasures in heaven by my good works and just encourages me to do so. So why don't I start doing good works in order to gather more treasures in heaven? Yeah. Isn't that isn't that uh, what I should be doing here? Most importantly. So this is a great motivation. It's a great motivation. And of course, I don't mean no work, no job. I mean, think about your eternal uh, treasures mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and like I just want to read specifically because I just read this in James 2, actually. Um, James 2, it says, what good is it? James 2, verse 14, it says, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. 
If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Um, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Um, and then it just continues on. Verse 19, you believe that there is one God? Good. Even the believe it, or <laughs> even the demons. Demons. Yeah. And then 20, it says, you foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Um, and it says that you see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And I think that right there, verses like when it says like his faith was made complete by his actions. So it's like like the way that we live, like through our faith, like you can see like your heart attitude by your actions, just like how you shared before about like your relationship. You might have been a believer, but your actions were not um like reflecting that. Like they yeah. are like, our life can be lived as an evidence of like what Jesus has done in us. And like, it can be a reflection to literally what the Lord has done in our life. And yeah. um, so I definitely agree that it's like our life with Christ should be accompanied by our works. And it's not saying like sell your house to go, but maybe that is a conviction that yeah, maybe you have something that you know you don't need. It could be. Yeah. Like it maybe could be. It really depends on you. And, yeah. And yeah. Like, not our own convictions. Like there's nothing, things that we could um maybe like whatever it is like to you um whoever's listening maybe there's things that you like, can be convicted of that maybe you are um holding on to more than even like, maybe you're even putting things above jesus in your life mm -hmm. and um in general we're all just called to love each other like yeah we can truly like live like jesus by loving everyone and we can love others yes. through truth and I think, mm -hmm. yeah, there's just like so much power in um, saying the truth, you mean? Yeah, like honestly, saying the truth, like being real, even with like your friends, like like if there's mm -hmm. something that like is going on, you see they're experiencing, and no one's speaking up to like help them acknowledge, like give them the eyes to see, because we can't. Yeah. Like, sometimes I think like like we think that people just like have it all like people just know exactly what they're thinking like people just know like we think that oh they know like they know what they're doing yeah. like something like people need like like someone just like encourage them yes like, yes or, like be there for them get be a voice for them to help them like understand maybe like like what they are uh experiencing or what they're doing like sometimes we just don't even yeah. have the like wisdom in that moment or discernment and like that's why we need good friends, good people to speak up in our lives and like call out things, and because we want to be there for each other and like produce life and produce like the fruit of the spirit. And that's another way, just like love each other. Yeah. But the, yes, exactly. The list can certainly go on and on, but real love, real love. I want, love. I just want to say this: is real love uh, is rooted in truth. So real love goes with truth mm -hmm. and truth with love. Yeah. So there, these two, they work together. Find friends that will tell you the truth in the eyes. Yeah. In the eyes with uh, love yeah. because they care for you. Um, yeah. Such friends you need because these friends will help you and actually care for you to come out of your mess or a problem. Yeah. That's true. Do not find friends that just leave you alone when you're in a difficult place and encourage you, but um, it may say something, but um, their words may be empty and do not involve any works, actually. So I believe real friendship is also, the, like, I believe real friendship has both um, it has, it has um, an element of, you know, encouraging, but also an element of actions. Mm -hmm. So look for such people. Find really friendships that elevate you. Yeah. 
and they make you just like want to like push more do more like become better versions of yourself and yes like help you see your potential and like only lift you up and like are excited for your they're excited for your what you're excited about like, and they yeah. are like cheering you on for what you are achieving and just rooting you more and more in Christ exactly. I, and it's yeah. rare it's rare to find a good friend but when you do find good friends um don't let them go yeah. like continue to make the effort every day to um yes be there everything takes effort but like anything that is meant to last like takes effort and like that's like so cool like because it's like it all is worth it and yeah. yeah you know so this is great like everything everything you shared is so good <laughs> yeah this author um that i'm aforementioned um, he has a very cool quote I like to use in my mind when I feel down because, yeah, I still feel down sometimes with life. It's something that happens to all of us. Um, but he says something very wise. He says, if you cannot find a solution to your problems at the moment, become someone else's solution. Mm. And wow. <laughs> this way, just help someone become yeah. their solution to their problem. That will help you with your problem as well. That is really good. Like, I really, yeah. I like that because sometimes um, we're not always going to have our problem solved in a moment. Like, like sometimes yeah. we're gonna maybe have to sit in a conflict for a little bit few days we're going to keep praying about it or maybe there's something that's happening maybe you just experience an event and it's like there's nothing to really help you to find the answers to keep moving forward so i really like yeah. like i like that and who who is that the same author you said yeah it's yeah it's the same author his name is nick Vujic. okay yeah it's really good you'll have to um uh send me the book so i can link it because i think that'd be really yeah. cool for people who are interested it's, in reading what's do you know the it's, title it's a very it's it's a it's a great book yeah it's called life without limits mm, that's really and he he's a person that was born without arms and legs by the way so he um he says his story in this book and yeah. encourages us to not put limits to our life when life tries to put us down and show us lies that, that we're not worth enough. We're not worth. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. If a, if a person without arms and legs can find purpose for his life, for his life, can find the purpose for his life and um, not give up, I, I think we don't have an excuse to say we cannot uh you know we cannot continue living we cannot continue fighting and seeking this is i think what we are trying to say here like most important we're trying to say uh be active seek it seek um your you have a value remember your true value as well yeah and do not think you can put it up by yourself but have good friends among you that yeah. good friendships that want to elevate you yeah i think all of this really is it's really uh coming together mm -hmm. yeah like yeah. the overall like the overall message of just tying it all together just like you said it's like no matter who you are there's more there like there's more to you there's more potential and there's so much more to your story and even when you think you know it all like you don't and there's such a bigger yeah. purpose, bigger plan bigger story that god already has for you and your life truly holds so much meaning and just to kind of like reflect on everything that was shared from your testimony i just want to say thank you for how much you were willing to open up and express like i know like people listening are going to be blessed by this episode. I've, yeah. honestly, I've learned a lot as well. And I've just been really encouraged. And um, thank you, Olivia, as well. No, seriously, thank you, Diman. And, <laughs> and I think that 
I'm just looking forward to see everything that continues to happen in your life and to see how God continues to use you and what he has in store because it's going to be amazing. And don't ever stop seeking Jesus. Yes. He's got, he's using you. He really is. And so, yeah. so what's, yeah. what's, what's next for you? What's life uh, looking like right now? Yeah, well, next for me would be I'm for st studying at university at the moment, so finishing my bachelor, and yeah, pursuit of uh, my career. I'm trying to find opportunities while studying as well to show where God leads me in one direction professionally. What is next for me? I think is really just increasing in knowledge of Him. Mm -hmm. As I said, this journey never stops. People like you still. I I right now I still have more like way more to go to yeah. uh, find out my <laughs> internal gifts. So and getting to know our creators heart better. So it's a it's just a yeah continue of pursuit and seeking what yeah. he has for me for my life at the moment yeah i love that like, that's like the most beautiful part it's a never-ending journey yeah like walk of faith with jesus it's so good all right well as this comes to a close i'm gonna say thank you again and so um much. for everyone listening i just hope you know you're loved you're chosen you're seen there's a purpose for you there's a story that god has written out and don't forget it everyone today is the best day ever um, whether you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, um, I just would really appreciate if you would be willing to like or subscribe to the channel and leave a review. Tell us what your takeaway was. Leave a comment. I We'd love to hear. I would love to hear and respond back to you all about what um, what you learned. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Click that button, follow us, and yeah. <laughs> We hope that that was helpful for you in any way. Think about that. And yeah, I believe that uh, really um, the truth can change your life. Yes, that is the truth. <laughs> the truth. Exactly. Be. The truth. Yes. The, the truth, truth itself. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to head out. Thank you so much again. And we'll catch you guys next week on the Best yes. Day Ever podcast. Best Bye. day ever. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>